Hey, we got a great episode for you today. Today, Ellie's going to be showing us how we built RoslinPad, which is a really cool open source editor using Roslyn and cross-platform and open source and all the good stuff. So stick around. Hey, Ellie. Uh, so Pretty can gone. you tell me a little bit about RoslinPad? Sure. So uh, I started out RoslinPad uh, a few years ago as a way to learn about Roslyn which is uh, the C-sharp compiler. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to see if I could build an editor similar to Visual Studio using Roslyn. And uh, many people don't know this, but a lot of the code that builds this, the language service inside Visual Studio is inside the open source Roslyn repo. And you can just take the nuggets, the Microsoft Code Analysis nuggets, and build a lot of the stuff that you see in Visual Studio, like code completion, and uh, uh, semantic information and uh, analyzers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing all that stuff's built in. So you're able to give it, I mean, a, a lightweight kind of feel of Visual Studio. Can can you show me uh, what, what Roslyn Pad looks like? Yeah, sure. So um, you can see that it's a code editor that you get a single c -sharp file inside. And uh, in the file, you can write pretty much everything you can write inside any c -sharp file. And uh, let's, let's review what we have here. We have a class, and uh, it implements an interface. And um, um, we have a record here. And this record is returning, uh, this method is returning the, uh, the record. And then over here, we just call this record, uh, call this method and uh, dump it. And dump is an extension method that RoslinPad provides in order to see the results. And when we run it, let's just click Run, we can see that RoslinPad will compile the code and will show the result down here. Um, RoslinPad will also um, uh, uh, restore any nuggets you, you, uh, you need. Uh, uh, and you can add nuggets through here. Uh, let's just, uh, I'll add them in a new document. Um, Let's say I want to use dependency injection. So I can write dependency here. And I get the result from nuget.org. And I'll just select dependency injection. Oh, nice. You can see that RoslinPad is doing a restore in the background. And once the restore is done, you'll get com code completion for everything. And uh, let's wait. And so I can write bar services equals new service collection. And once I click Enter, you can see that the using is added automatically, just like in Visual Studio. So we get all this this richness of uh, of the service uh, of the the language service uh, this from Roslyn right uh, baked into here. Um, wow! Yeah. yeah. So so I'm noticing uh, you know it's doing the the syntax highlighting. It's doing code completion. The the new get. Uh, uh, that hash R syntax for, for bringing in uh, the NuGet packages is really nice. Yeah, so that's actually a, a, um, something I borrowed from uh, a, a variant of C-sharp that's called a script language. Uh, and uh, it doesn't really exist in the regular C-sharp language, but I'm, I'm doing some, doing some uh, extra parsing here uh, inside RoslinPad to enable it. Um, okay. You can see this in, in the... Um, C sharp interactive window inside uh, Visual Studio. Uh, this uh, this syntax. Okay, so you said you're using Roslyn for the language services, and then uh, how about the UI? So for the UI, I had to build something uh, uh, in order to 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 get at the the editor experience. So uh, the Visual Studio uh, editor is is of course not open source, and it isn't embeddable in. Uh, uh, mm -hmm any application outside Microsoft. And uh, so I use something called Avalon Edit, which is an awesome WTF control. And uh, what it does is allow you to build an editor with many of the features you see inside Visual Studio, such as highlighting and uh, adding all sorts of uh, annotations on the code. Like, uh, for example, if I make a mistake here, you can see the red quickly. Uh, so you can render all sorts of stuff. Uh, and you can also uh, see the, the um, bulb here. 
with a menu. It's also something that's easily provided by this editor. Of course, I had to do all the integration work to get all the Roslyn parts working with the Avalon edit. Uh, <laughs> but Avalon edit did, did a lot of the heavy lifting here. Yeah. Uh, how much work do you have to do as there's new releases of, say, .NET or C Sharp in order to uh, kind for, of pull in the updates? Yeah, for .NET, I don't have to do any work. You can see yeah. here that uh, you can see .NET 9 already appearing here because it loaded the text the SDK. So I don't have to do any work, but I do have to do work to enable a new Roslyn feature because I'm using some internal members of, of Roslyn, internal uh, classes and and, and, and uh, methods. So mm -hmm. I had to compile with, with a, a specific version of Roslyn and I do, the, do that periodically whenever I release a version, it includes the latest version of Roslyn and the, the latest language. Uh, and you can also try out some of the preview uh, features that are merged into uh, the main branch, uh, like you do in, in the Visual Studio preview uh, 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 version. Oh, cool. Okay. So you were saying you, you built this partly to just learn about Roslyn. What, what uh, sort of things did you learn? Um, so I learned how, how the compiler works and how all the language services work, how the autocompletion works. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of all the things you see in the editor, uh, uh, you, can, you can learn how to connect with them, how to consume them. And, I, I, and sometimes I had to even delve even further to see uh, how they actually work. And I actually even fixed a, a minor bug in, in Roslyn that has to do uh, uh, with code completion because of Roslyn Fab. Okay. And then you were saying, so this is built with Avalon Edit, and then as a result, it's a WPF control. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. All of this is a WPF app. Uh, I also have a cross-platform version, uh, which is built using uh, an Avalonia, which is sort of a port of a WPF. It's not a direct port. They do have some things that, 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 that are different. And uh, so I have to maintain two XAML files, one for WPF and one for Avalonia. Um, but you can see, uh, you get a very, very similar experience on the Mac and, and Linux using uh, uh, Roslyn pad with Avalonia. And I also ported the Avalon, Avalon edit, editor to Avalonia in order to, uh, to do that. And uh, I even see a lot of other uses for it. For example, someone built IL Spy using, uh, for Mac using the Aval uh, Avalonia edit control. So that's Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Wow. OK, so this is an open source project. Can you show me the repo? Yeah, sure. Nice. <clears throat> so this is the repo. You can see. There's a readme file here, uh, how to install. You can install from GitHub, from Microsoft Store, and from Winget. Um, I'm also uh, thinking about adding uh, um, uh, an installer for Mac. Uh, there is a, an option to download uh, the Mac and Linux version from the, the GitHub repo. Mm -hmm. um, here you can see uh, NuGet packages. I didn't talk about this, but I also published uh, the, the code editor and uh, some of the helpers around it uh, as NuGet packages, which means you can actually embed this editor into your application. No, it's not a production quality uh, uh, project because this is, as I said, it's a pet project. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, but but I have seen uh, a few uh, uh, products that that embedded it into their their, their code, which is uh, an ICC. Uh, That's very cool. So then by by in pulling in the NuGet package, I could add a WPF uh, yeah. editor into my app. And, yeah, and you can see a code sample here that shows you how to do that. Exactly. Nice, nice. Wow. Um, OK, and so then as an open source project, you said this is a project you're mostly developing on your own. Um, yeah. Do you take pull requests? Of course, I love pull requests. And uh, uh, I do have quite a few issues here um, that are marked as help wanted, you can see. So I would love for people to get involved. And indeed, some people do uh, do uh, pull requests, and I review them uh, gladly. And uh, yeah, it's nice to see the community involved in this. OK. One other thing, I was looking at the, at the repo here, and you've got a, a, a nice release history going back years. Um, so you've been yeah. adding in features over time. Wow. 
Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think the first release was uh, in, in, in GitHub was in 2016, and I've been releasing uh, pretty steadily since then. And you can see some releases that even have a lot of community con contributions. Uh, basically, I started this as, as a project for myself. I just want to learn about Proslin, and I uh, decided to put it on GitHub maybe as a sample for someone to see how to integrate Proslin services inside uh, their code. And uh, it uh, users started using it. Uh, I, I was using it daily at that time because uh, I was adding features and uh, for, for myself mostly. But then you know people on GitHub made feature requests and they made the product better. Uh, so it's very nice to see it grow through the, through the years. Great. Uh, is there anything else you want to share? Yeah, so this uh, there is one feature that users have been asking for a while, and I finally got around to 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 do it, and then that's uh, theme support, uh, or m most likely dark mode support. So you can see that if I switch to, to dark mode on Windows, uh, Rosin Pad will switch, and you get also the the all the the editor colors and all the UI will switch. Basically, this is, this supports VS Code theming, so you can load any theme. Oh wow. Oh, that's great! Wow. Well, well, congrats. This is a this is an amazing project, fun to learn about, okay. and uh, for people watching, they can jump in on those uh, help wanted issues and get involved too. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Thank you.